Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 11th of November. Two terrorists neutralized in encounter in India's Dhamman Kashmir. Cyclone Bulbul kills at least 17 in India and Bangladesh. And Roy wraps over Sri Lankan presidential frontrunner Gotabaya's U.S. citizenship. And now for all the details. Two terrorists were neutralized by security forces in an encounter in Bandipura in India's Dhamman Kashmir on Monday. Security forces launched a search operation on Sunday following specific information about the presence of some terrorists. One more terrorist was gunned down by security forces in a fresh encounter that broke out in Bandipura district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Monday. While one terrorist was killed on Sunday during a gunfight between security forces in Lodara village in Bandipura, another was killed this morning, officials said. The encounter first broke out when security forces launched a search operation on Sunday following specific information about the presence of some terrorists. The hiding terrorists opened fire on the security personnel who retaliated, leading to a gunfight. Chinar Corps of the Indian Army confirmed the news in a tweet and said that a weapon and warlike stores were also recovered from the slain terrorists. India accuses Pakistan of arming and infiltrating terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. Cyclone Bulbul claimed nearly 17 lives as it hit India's coastal district and neighbouring Bangladesh on Sunday. Extensive damage to houses, trees and communication lines has also been reported. A strong cyclone named Bulbul killed and displaced several people in northeastern India and Bangladesh after it hit the Bay of Bengal on Sunday. The cyclone in southwestern parts of Bangladesh killed at least seven people after reaching to its different coastal districts, local media reported on Monday. Hundreds of houses, roads were damaged and low-lying lands inundated, which resulted in suspension of all kinds of communication in parts of the country. Thousands of trees were also uprooted due to the heavy blow of the cyclonic storm. Meanwhile, in India's West Bengal province, where the storm made its first landfall on Saturday before making its way to neighbouring Bangladesh, has left at least 10 people dead. The severe cyclonic storm brought in its wake heavy rain and gale wind, damaging hundreds of houses and trees. Nearly 2 lakh people have been moved to relief camps set up in nine places of the province, local media reported. Many areas in the province have also been inundated due to continuous rain. The authorities have ordered a temporary ban on boat and ferry movements in internal riverine routes and coastal waters, besides closing air traffic operations near coastal airports for nearly 24 hours. India's Supreme Court delivered its historic judgment in the highly sensitive Ram Janabhumi Babri Masjid title suit on 9th of November. Normalcy prevailed in northern Ayodhya city on Sunday post the judgment in favour of a Hindu group, paving way for construction of a temple while directing allotment of alternative land to Muslims to build a new mosque. Normalcy prevailed in India's northern Ayodhya city on Sunday, a day after the Supreme Court delivered its historic judgment in the highly sensitive Ram Janmabhoomi Babri Masjid title suit. Residents of Ayodhya city went about their daily activities and vehicular movement was allowed on the main roads. Security personnel were seen thoroughly checking vehicles entering the town and the identity of the occupants. While Hindus welcomed the decision as they expressed their happiness, some Muslims remained unsatisfied. 
एक दोनों धर्मों के बीच में ब्रदरहुड बनाने का काम कराया इसने जजमेंट ने और ये जो हमारे 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 जो संविधान का जो मूल ढांचा है उसमें जो सेकुलरिज्म जो वर्ड है उस वर्ड उस जो शब्द पे है वो सही पूर्ण पूर्ण रूप से खराब सही बैठता है A Supreme Court bench headed by Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi on Saturday based its unanimous and historic judgment on Hindu's claim that the site is the birthplace of Lord Ram. The Apex Court said the mosque should be constructed at a prominent site and a trust should be formed within 3 months for the construction of the temple at the site many Hindus believe Lord Ram was born. The bench said possession of the disputed 2.77 acre land rights will be handed over to Ram Lalla, one of the three litigants in the case. The possession, however, will remain with a central government receiver. In 1992, a Hindu mob destroyed the 16th century Babri Mosque on the site, triggering riots in which about 2,000 people were killed across the country. Moving on during an event in Geneva experts expressed concerns over terror financing by state and non-state actors in South Asia especially by Pakistan despite international pressure Pakistan has continued to shelter globally designated terror organizations on its soil Experts in South Asia have expressed serious concerns over terror financing by state and non-state actors in South Asia especially by Pakistan and its global consequences speaking during a seminar on the issue in geneva a panel comprising of scholars policy advisers and researchers discussed that pakistan continues to give shelter to internationally recognized terrorist organizations and also aids them in running organized crimes they suggested pakistan should identify assess and understand risks associated with terror groups operating on its soil which continue to raise funds openly in south asia we're seeing terrorist groups increasingly gain a foothold not just in pakistan but in other countries as well and i think pakistan's going to continue to be a, a key a key area where where terrorist groups will want to uh, locate and we know that a lot of the links between these groups and and transnational crime are affecting other parts of the world other regions of the world the fact that some officials including in the military but some officials in Pakistan they enable terrorist groups to engage in criminal activities organized uh, crime uh, drug smuggling uh, gem smuggling from Afghanistan uh, you have weapons trafficking as well human trafficking etc that gives them that gives those groups what they need the oxygen the need to operate and that is the main threat that we are facing right now Pakistan which remains in financial action task force or FATF's grey list was last month given a final deadline till February 2020 to save itself from being pushed into its blacklist which can prove disastrous for the country's crippling economic condition Pakistan has earlier failed to complete the action plan first by a January deadline then in May and later in October this year In news from Afghanistan, Afghan Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah, who contested in the recently held presidential polls, has urged the Independent Election Commission to stop the vote recount and call the process illegal. Afghanistan's Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah on Sunday called for a halt to a recount of votes in the recent presidential election and said he would not accept fraud marked results. Addressing a rally in Kabul, Abdullah, who also contested in the presidential polls, urged the Independent Election Commission or IEC to stop the recounting, calling the process illegal. He said the poll result should be based on the clean votes of people. Abdullah said that his team will send a letter to the IEC about the issue and if the IEC does not meet the demands of his team, they will make another move which will be peaceful. Abdullah's team specified four categories of fraudulent votes that comprise votes which are under server quarantine, votes which were cast before or after election day, votes validated by duplicate photos, votes from devices that were lost. The presidential polls were held on 28 of September and the preliminary results were scheduled to be announced on October 19. The announcement was delayed due to technical issues. 
A fresh row has erupted over the U.S. citizenship of Sri Lankan presidential front-runner Gotabaya Rajpaksa as his name is not there in the latest federal register released by the U.S. government. Sri Lanka does not allow dual citizens or non-citizens to contest national elections. A fresh row has erupted over the U.S. citizenship of Gotabaya Rajapaksa, the presidential candidate of Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna or SLPP, with incumbent Minister of Telecommunication Harin Fernando alleging that he had not completed the process of renouncing it. Fernando posted on social media that the latest federal register released by the U.S. government doesn't include Rajapaksa's name under those who renounced U.S. citizenship by 30th September 2019, despite his claims giving up U.S. nationality on May 3rd this year. Sri Lanka does not allow dual citizenship or non-citizens to contest national elections. Fernando said the 2019 presidential battle has become a struggle between a genuine Sri Lankan and an American citizen. However, a group of lawyers for Rajapaksa refuted the allegation on Sunday saying that all necessary documentation has been submitted to the Election Commission for perusal. The presidential poll in the island nation is slated to be held on November 16. A social movement has been launched in Nepal to protect Tundikhel, one of the largest parade squares of South Asia. Residents formed a human chain to draw attention over Tundikhel's shrinking area and raise awareness in preserving it. A social movement named Occupy Tundikhel was launched in Nepal to protect one of the largest parade squares of South Asia. The movement was announced in Nepali capital Kathmandu on November 9 and a human chain was formed around the open space of Tundikhel to draw attention to the issue. Scores of activists and people who formed the human chain to preserve Tundikhel carried placards and banners asking the government to preserve the open area which is now shrinking. Seeing especially Kathmandu Valley shrink, shrink and shrink with concrete and less and less open spaces. And then with my children, and now I have four grandchildren, I look at their future and see, I, I mean, I'm in the, my 60s, you know, so how many years do I have? But when I look at the younger ones and what are we leaving for them? Where are the open spaces? Tundi Kale, which also covers the army pavilion, dates back to at least the early 18th century during the Malla period. It then served as a military parade ground, horse race track, spot for religious festivals, as well as public park and grazing ground. But over the years, it has shrunk in size and is still being encroached. It was used to dump rubble from the 2015 earthquake and even today debris from government construction activities that are underway is deposited here. An India-based wildlife conservation centre unveiled the country's first elephant memorial in northern Mathura city recently. The memorial is first of its kind which has been established to honour elephants that lost their lives to illegal trafficking, abuse and cruelty. India's first elephant memorial was inaugurated in Mathura city of northern Uttar Pradesh province recently in remembrance of elephants that lost their lives due to human brutalities. The first of its kind memorial was established by Wildlife SOS, a Mathura-based wildlife conservation center. The memorial has stones bearing names and information of the elephants that passed away in the conservation center. <laughs> हमारी वेटरनरी टीम ने ट्रीटमेंट किया जितना उनसे हो सका उसके बाद में वो स्वर्ग गए तो उसके अलावा और हमारे तीन अन्य हाथी थे मोहन लाखी और इन सब हाथियों का भी हमारे यहां लगातार ट्रीटमेंट चलता रहा वो किसी बीमार गंभीर बीमारी की वजह से हमारे साथ नहीं है तो उनको याद करने के लिए हमने भारत का पहला एलिफेंट मेमोरियल बनाया Elephants are deeply revered in India where the elephant-headed god Ganesha is one of the most popular in the Hindu pantheon and is also considered lucky. But its divine status has not saved the animal from killings either due to speeding trains or vehicles or else the phenomenon of man-elephant conflict. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.